Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is John Eilberg. And he is the lead consultant and partner at Boston Web Partners, which is located in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, John helps B2B and small to medium businesses, startups, and established corporations to increase their top line revenue through digital marketing, SEO, paid search, and web design and uh, by increasing web traffic and driving leads and conversions. Welcome to the show, John Eilberg. Thank you, Neil. Nice to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, John, and your background, uh, how you got started in marketing, and then we want to quickly jump into who you help. Sure. I've been working in marketing for a number of years, working for other agencies, uh, handling very large brands. After working for those agencies, we saw a niche where smaller companies without 400 thousand dollar budgets were being underserved they still wanted the best practices and the uh the strategies that the bigger brands were receiving but they were typically having their accounts handed off to interns and junior people after the deal was signed and underserved we saw that those smaller companies needed to have the professional services equal to the bigger brands and that's what we strive to do we help small and medium-sized businesses primarily b2b to drive more quality web traffic to their website and surge leads and conversions which helps their top line revenue Mm. yeah that's uh, often a problem within seo and i think a lot the companies have issues with that. You know, everything sounds good when they're about to sign on and then they kind of get passed off and they don't necessarily see the results that they have been expecting. Um, so tell me, you know, what kind of clients it is that you work with on a day to day? Well, as I said, we do have a number of uh, business to consumer clients, but we primarily focus on professional services, uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. high tech, uh, healthcare, and companies that are looking to drive leads. So that tends to be uh, B two B. Excellent. And what kind of problems do these B two B companies have? Do you, do you find that they have had those experiences where they've been passed off and they might have had a bad uh, SEO experience before and they're just you know a little wary of new companies? Yeah, it's a simple matter of economics. Some companies don't have the budget, therefore they're not handled professionally and they're not given the attention. Uh, what we do is we only work with uh, senior uh, people here to handle accounts and we employ the same best practices and techniques all white hat to truly drive conversions for these companies and we document <clears throat> and report on a monthly basis to show performance as they succeed we both prosper mm. I think one of the challenges for startups is they have a choice they can try to do it in-house with limited experience, and that usually gets them in trouble. Or they can uh, work with an agency, but they have to pick the right agency that's going to give them that attention, and that's what we strive for. So how do you actually measure results uh, for your clients? You say you give them a... A uh, monthly report, what kind of information does that include? Well, uh, ahead of that, there's uh, extensive heavy lifting with three areas, really. 
what we do is take a holistic approach to say SEO. We look at the current website. Now, aesthetically, a website might look brilliant. It might have all the bells and whistles that you expect, uh, lending credibility to a company. But behind the scenes, it might be slow. They might be missing the essential SEO best practices that Google is looking for. Maybe there may be um, broken links. Uh, there are a number of things that hobble a company's ability to, to rank on page one in the Google results for the keywords that matter based on the back end of their website. So that's the first thing we look at is basically the health of the domain. We then look at the keywords that they're currently ranking for, any success they have, but we couple that with a competitive analysis to look at where they stack up versus the competition. Sometimes we're able to clean some real SEO keyword gems within that analysis, and we fold that into our strategy. The last part is putting together a very stepped approach to help the company drive more quality web traffic for the keywords that matter to their business based on search volume. It's important to know that coming up on page one for a key phrase that only gets 50 searches a month is nothing to write home about. We really need to not guess, but rather take a look at the hard data to see what people are truly searching for and help a company to optimize around those key phrases. Hmm. Well, let's uh, break that down a little bit and talk about those points individually because uh, talk to me about the health of the, the domain because in Google's eyes, that seems to be something that is becoming more and more important these days. Yeah, I, I'm not bashful about talking about the fact that WordPress is inherently slow. And despite the fear of having to update all the plugins and bug fixes and worrying about third party technology that you know makes it all work, it can cause latency. And speed is a ranking factor for Google. It is imperative that pages load quickly. Beyond that, there are certain things that need to be in place. For example, metadata, which some people say, hey, it doesn't really matter. It truly does matter. Your metadata, if put together correctly, shows your page indexes with the messaging that you need to convey. Those are your billboards on the internet highway. And if they're not well written, people are going to pass by. They're not going to click on you. Google's going to recognize that. And they're going to say, you know, you really don't belong on page one because you're not having any engagement with these pages. And it's a house of cards. What we do is really dive into the technical aspects, which uncover a plethora of things that could not through the website health from being SEO friendly to becoming SEO aggressive. And that's where we see the best traction and move the needle. Hmm. So the metadata is what shows up on the first page of Google. So it's almost like having a convincing ad in the, in the paid ad section that invites people to take action. Is that what you're trying to do? That's exactly right, Neil. Um, <clears throat> in some cases where you don't have metadata, Google will try to scrape together a title and a description for that page. And it usually doesn't come across uh, very well. Other cases where you'll see three dots, those are called ellipsis. That's where Google is truncating your description because it may be too long or again, it's being cobbled together in some form to relay what that content is about. Those, those are the baby steps we need, particularly on the top navigational pages to ensure that we're getting our message across when those pages are shown 
for the keywords that matter to a business. Um, getting back to the speed issue, and you mentioned that WordPress is uh, pretty slow with all the extra coding and everything else that they have in there. What are the solutions um, that you can use to speed up the site? You know, what really helps? To, do you suggest people don't use WordPress anymore? Well, if you're starting from scratch, there are a number of alternatives that may be better, better, a better choice. And surprisingly, a lot easier to edit and modify on a regular basis and maintain, which would drive down your, your um, overhead. WordPress, in, in the cases where we inherit a WordPress site, we can make the WordPress site faster, but it takes some work. What we do is employ uh, the optimizations that we're, we're going to recommend. That could be anything from um, reducing image sizes to uh, reevaluating the plugins that you're using, looking at the host, looking at the various components that make up your WordPress site. If um, the client is open to moving to a different platform, they have a much happier life with a self-contained content management system that is lightning fast using a more advanced technology developed by Facebook called React. That will not only speed up page time, but it will cut down on bounce rate. It will make Google happy with uh, the speed and uh, drive more conversions. Mm, excellent. Definitely a lot to think about there. Um, do you find that businesses that have had a website for five to 10 years have just you know, added so much to the site in the back end with different plugins here or there, or images, that this kind of stuff just builds and gets worse and worse as the years go on? Well, it's a double-edged sword. WordPress is constantly adding enhancements and trying to keep up uh, and, and, and rid themselves of that blogger image that they originally started as. The trouble is it's become so robust, it's, it's a bit unmanageable for marketers who are simply trying to edit a page and make it an SEO friendly and ensure that things are looking right aesthetically, but also not hindering the speed or, or the experience that uh, they're trying to convey on their site. So unless you really have a guru or you're paying someone to manage your WordPress, there, as I said, there are, there are easier ways to put up a brilliant website that are um, much better self-contained and look as good, if not better, with faster speed than WordPress. I will mention this. WordPress is the most hacked content management system out there to hack. And if your WordPress site is hacked, in most cases, you can get it back up in a day or so. That's fine, right? But Google will sometimes hold a grudge. If they feel that your site is vulnerable and could um, be attacked by malware and infect users who are clicking on that page results, Google will actually put you in a sandbox and keep you from coming up for the keywords, except for maybe your brand name. <clears throat> In that case, you're really out of the game and you're gonna have to crawl out. Uh, it could be a manual penalty or, a, um, or an uh, automated penalty that will take you out of the game until you fix your website. So it's not enough just to have backup. You truly do need to pay attention to the health and well-being of your site if you wanna perform an SEO and not get penalized. Mm, that was my next question. Uh, I'm glad you addressed that because uh, WordPress is definitely notorious for getting hacked and, and having issues. But let's move on. Let's move on to the, the next step, which 
which is the keyword uh, analysis and, and the competition. What are you looking for uh, when you're doing keyword research for a company? We start off with a list from the client. <coughs> we ask them to provide us with a, a list of key phrases that they think they should be coming up for on page one. We take a look at that list, but by no means is that the holy grail. We need to look at the search volume behind those keywords that they think people are searching for. So again, you might have a turn of phrase that has a thousand searches per month versus 3,000 searches a month. We obviously want to optimize for the most popular key phrases. And in many cases, the internal speak of an organization is not always in concert with what users are searching for. <clears throat> The other thing we do, again, is that competitive analysis <coughs> to understand what we might be missing. Are there some keyword gems that we could incorporate and infuse into the content and future content that would help resonate with the lexicon of a particular vertical to make that customer feel like, wow, these guys get me. Not only does that help from a readability standpoint, but it will help with generating higher rankings for the keywords that matter uh, when searches are being conducted. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, we come up with a target key, li key list uh, for keywords that we're close to being on page one for, which would maybe be our low hanging fruit and then <clears throat> dream keywords that are not too broad, but at the same time nail exactly what we're going for. So when you're looking at the uh, keywords, when you're starting off, um, you know, the goal is to get the, the big keywords, but how realistic is it to rank for those keywords right away? You know, what kind of... Uh, time are we talking to you know rank for those big ones that is a um a difficult question to answer based on a number of factors and anyone being truthful will tell you that seo takes time and it's not all about keyword stuffing by any means what you really need to do is look at a competitor landscape even if you need to take a look at maybe a keyword search and there may be a number one slot taken up by your competitor. It may not be your competitor at all, yet they're coming up on page one for the term that you want. So looking at the competitive landscape is something that we need to consider. The other thing we need to do is be realistic with the kinds of keywords we can come up for. We can come up all day for brand names. If I open up a company called Widget123, I'll be on page one every day for that term. But if I want to come up for, say, uh, computer hardware or um, computer software, the chances of coming up for such a broad key term are next to, are, are non-existent because we don't have the credibility of the old crusty URLs that have been out there talking about computer hardware, computer software, companies that are selling those products, companies that have been around very large brands. So what we need to focus on is really specific key phrases that still have surge volume that are gonna, that are gonna help us drive more quality web traffic. Those are called long tail key phrases, which normally are about three to five words long in length. That will give us the true description of what we're trying to hone in on. And that's where we try to strive for page one credibility. Hmm. So what goes into ranking a page that is going to get found? These are all very good questions. Uh, Google has their own uh, algorithm behind the curtain 
that literally looks at hundreds of factors to why one company might rank higher than another. Uh, some are known, some aren't. Uh, rank brain is something that uh, Google um, uses to analyze content and crawl sites and determine which companies are best served to searchers for keywords that they might be looking for. What we do as SEO experts is try to appease and make Google love us from every aspect, from content, which should be shareable and remarkable, to a healthy website, which I mentioned, and also to look at what the user may be looking for. Many people think that you should write with mobile in mind because we are doing a number of uh, higher mobile searches these days on our phone. Mobile is now considered to be a driving factor for ranking on desktop and tablet because if you think about it, the world has uh, maybe a phone device. Many of us in the US and uh, Europe have uh, many devices, but the majority of the world has phones only. So Google recognizes that and realizes that things need to uh, resonate on mobile, then trickle down to other devices. So the, the mobile uh, ranking system is uh, paramount, especially moving forward. What does that mean for uh, businesses that, you know, might have a good ranking on a desktop? Does that mean that if their site isn't ready for mobile, they're going to lose that ranking? It, it, it's certainly possible because Google is pushing for um, mobile optimization from an SEO standpoint. I would say that it's critical that a company have a uh, mobile site, a responsive site, and to ensure that it's being optimized for speed and layout so that Google will recognize it as being uh, a high, a high performer in the mix. If your mobile site is not performing, the likelihood is that you will suffer in page rankings. Right. So what are some of the misconceptions, John, that you hear about uh, SEO specifically uh, from your clients? Many of our clients are, um, focused on SEO, but again, we, we take a holistic approach, and I think one of the misconceptions is that SEO is the silver bullet. And from a marketer's standpoint, that's breathtakingly um, limiting if you truly want to drive leads. Using Google AdWords, soon to be Google Ads, is paramount to the success of any B2B organization. These are the text ads that appear on the top of popular search result pages that you can show up for tomorrow for the keywords that matter to your business. As I mentioned, SEO takes time. A Google AdWords campaign will enable our clients to show up for keywords on page one to drive quality web traffic immediately. The other thing that we encourage is something called Google remarketing, which is a brilliant way of keeping your brand top of mind. When you visit a web page or a website of our clients, you are cooking and you are then followed with banners that beckon you to come back to the website that you visited maybe a week or two weeks later to take advantage of an offer 
or an ebook or to um, reconsider the company that you visited a while back. This keeps the company top of mind during the critical consideration stage. And the, the thing that many um, prospects who we speak to don't know is these banners show up in thousands and thousands of places, thousands of impressions. And you're spending nothing until someone clicks on the ads on the banners. And even then, a click is minimal, relatively very, very short money. But the brand exposure and the ability to reach back to people who have visited your site or landing page is truly a powerful way of getting a second punch and getting clients to convert and become a customer. Mm. So it's all about, like you said, that holistic approach. You know, SEO is definitely one strategy to, you know, get eyeballs to your website, but, you know, you've got to do more to keep them coming back with that kind of uh, retargeting. It's true. Uh, many of our clients say, well, what should we focus on? And the good news and the bad news is you need to focus on all of it. Carve out a little bit of your budget for each channel. <clears throat> You'll be surprised to see that uh, one channel might be uh, really trouncing the other. And it's all about driving leads immediately while SEO is taking hold. That is the best blend for our clients. Hmm. And once uh, everything is up and running, once you've got your SEO campaign, your pay-per-click campaign, and your your social media campaign, does it all just help each other out and work better together than trying to do one at a time? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I just... Uh, I think, I think you answered the question right there. If you're just seen around a particular topic in all these different places, you're certainly going to be considered in the mix. You're going to appear as big as you want and showing up for uh, page one in, in Google for SEO and in an ad and having a remarketing banner and maybe something with social media is really going to solidify the decision in the prospect's mind even before they pick up the phone that you may be the best choice for their product. Mm -hmm. And that's just been seen everywhere as, you know, that authority in the market uh, certainly helps. Well, John, give us uh, an example of somebody that you've worked with um, you know what kind of problems were they having when they came to you uh, what kind of solutions were you able to provide for them and ultimately what was the outcome to their business <coughs> sure um, well as I said we work with many kinds of companies high-tech um, SaaS, healthcare professional services there was a a uh, very large defense um, defense company that manufactured uh, radar evading skin for jet fighters and and um, and weapons, and <clears throat> they were a big supplier in a brick and mortar sense. They are the leader, and their site was old. And they kind of let the site go for a while. And that same scenario occurred where <clears throat> Google, Google found that there were some issues and uh, put them in the sandbox. Now, you cannot SEO yourself out of a penalty. You have to fix what's broken and what's hindering Google from showing your ad in more place or your website rather in more places. What we were able to do is go in, make the website healthy again, submit it back to Google, and get them 
not only back in rankings for the keywords that matter, but to get them between 12 and 15 different keywords for their products, not their brand names, but their product types, their services, and get them on page one results within three months, which drove web traffic, which drove sales, which turned their online business around. <clears throat> we then incorporated ads for any keywords where we weren't showing up on page one and drove conversions through Google while also improving their brand visibility with remarketing banners so that everyone who was coming up as an engineer or um, a manufacturer of these products understood that they were the leader to really help them transfer their reputation as a brick and mortar leader to not only uh, keep that going, but to enforce the fact that they were the brand leader online. Since then, they were acquired by a $15 billion company. We're still working with them today but the success story early on, uh, we think really led to their reputation uh, and, and, and helped them eclipse the competition by rebuilding their online presence. Mm -hmm. Great point there. You know, people want to do business with leaders. They want to associate with the best and you're never going to be viewed in that opinion if you don't get found and uh, being found often is definitely something that's going to help that well john eilberg from boston web partners has been uh, very good um talking with you today very clear uh, points that you have given us if somebody wants to reach out to you john what is the best way for them to do that Sure. Um, they can reach out to me directly at John, without the H, J-O-N, at Boston Web Partners, with an S, dot com. Or you can visit our website at bostonwebpartners.com and contact us there uh, via our form. And we'd be happy to uh, hear what the marketing challenges you you may have are and uh, work with you from there excellent stuff well you know seo is definitely something that can uh, drive uh, lots of traffic to the website but it is only one part of an overall marketing campaign and uh, using them all together uh, gets the best results. So thanks for sharing that information with us. Uh, John Eilberg, thank you very much for being my guest on the Trust Factor Radio today. Thank you, Neil. It's been a pleasure. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.